Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome to this week's card. I decided to do a double slider card. So as you pull the right hand side, um, it pops out and then so does the left hand side. So here's how it works. So you hold it up and then you just pull one side and there you go, they both come out. Now this card has quite a few steps to it, so I abbreviated some of the simple ones. So here's what I started with, five sheets of paper and um, a little piece of a bag. And if you go to my blog, I have measurements for all these pieces. Uh, I started off with a Fisker's Cloud Punch, which I punched out some Eclipse masking tape with. And then I uh, put them on my first sheet of cardstock here. And I measured one inch from the bottom and put a post-it right there so that I can mask grass. And so I'm going to take some Bashful Blue ink from Stampin' Up, and this is on Stampin' Up paper, and my ink applicator, and I'm going to uh, apply the ink all over. Then I'm going to flip my post-it around, so now I'm masking the sky, and I'm going to apply Wild Wasabi ink to the bottom for the grass. Alright, so I'm going to peel that away. I'm going to start with the tree. I'm um, using the Hero Sizzix combination of dies and stamps and some Memento Rich Cocoa ink. I'm just going to stamp that onto some Nina cardstock because I'm going to be using Copic markers. And then I'm going to use the Happy Birthday Sentiment from that same set and my Stampin' Jig to make sure that I get it lined up just right in the middle. And this set comes with a die that will cut that out for me. So I'm going to put it right over there and I'm going to use the cloud tape that I used earlier to hold it in place as I run it through my Big Shot machine. I'm going to use three different Copic markers. I'm going to use the darkest one on that middle line there. I'm doing this in parts because you don't want it to dry up. You want to blend it while it's still wet. I'm going to blend it out with a medium color and then this is kind of a yellowy green that I'm going to blend it out to the edge. Now I'm going to do this in parts all the way around. Alright, now I've got the tree trunk and I'm using wood grain stamp. I stamp it up and some chocolate chip ink on some uh, early espresso paper. I probably should have used chocolate chip paper. I don't know why I just grabbed the espresso paper. but Anyway, I'm just going to actually sketch out this tree. There's really nothing special about it and cut it out with a scissor. I'm going to use a sponge dauber, which is a fingertip ink applicator, and I'm going to ink up the edges with that chocolate chip ink so it gives a little bit more dimension. And this tree trunk is just going to lie flat against the card. And then I'm going to use some foam adhesive, Dimensionals by Stampin' Up, to pop up that top piece. Okay, now I'm going to start with the slider pieces, and I'm going to round out my corners with the corner chomper, and I'm going to measure out 5 eighths of an inch, and use that post-it, and this is going to be the tab that's going to pull. I'm using the Hero Arts, I think it's called mm, Playful Animals, I'm not sure, I'm going to have to put that on my blog. And I'm stamping it with some Memento Rich Cocoa ink because again we're going to be using Copic markers for this. So I run through this pretty quickly. I'm using three different colors and I'm going to apply the lightest color first all over and then I'll use my darkest into the shadow areas and then I come back in with a medium. And I realized later, I kept looking at this thinking, this just doesn't look right. Um, and it's because I made his tail come out of the side of his body, and I didn't realize that until later, so you'll see me later in the video fix that. So I should have created that shadow um, on the left-hand side where his tail is. Anyway, so again, same technique, all over light color, uh, darkest on the left and on the top a little bit and a little bit on the bottom, and then this medium is where I'm going to go on the right side, which is where my light source is, because I don't want it to be too dark on that side. And then back in with the original color. And notice I had a little bit, a little bit of dark areas underneath his head to, to kind of show where he's got a neck. And now I'm going to do my bunny. Um, I'm using W1, W3, and W5, and I'm going to use the same exact technique. So all over light, go in with a dark color, go in with a medium color on the left, and then also on the right, and then go back in with the original color. Same thing on his head. Now 
with the bunny, I went in with a colorless blender and I created a little bit more of light on his body. Okay, just a little bit of grass so they don't look like they're floating. And here I am going back in to create that little shadow there, you can see. Much better. And I also added a balloon and a hat, um, which I just used from the Owl Together Now set. And I've got this Dynamics My Favorite Thing set that comes with some speech bubbles, and I just used a couple of those. And then I'm going to pull out some letters, just some random letters I have laying around, and I'm going to put the letters right there in the bubbles. Now I'm taking some Bashful Blue ink and my foam applicator, and I'm just going to very lightly uh, just create some color in the background so it's not quite so white. I'm just going to go around my animal in the speech bubble and I'm going to use the grass down there. And I'm not using a post I'm not making fine lines or anything like that. It's just going to all sort of blend together. I'm going to do that for both pieces. Alright, this is the slider mechanism and I'm measuring one quarter of an inch in and I'm drawing a line and then I'm measuring three quarters of an inch from both sides. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now when I go in, I'm cutting so there's a there's three quarters of an three quarters of an inch at the top and at the bottom that I'm not cutting, and I'm one quarter of an inch in. And I'm going to take my bag, which you want to use a really nice high quality bag. Um, you don't want anything like crunchy or thin. This is sticky strip, and I used it a because it's very thin. It's like one eighth of an inch, and b because I really wanted to make sure it stayed in place. Now when you tie this around or stick it around. You want to keep it a little bit loose so it has some give for movement. And this is how it's going to roll around. So I moved uh, the sticky strip that I had put down the, the seam all the way to the left hand side. Okay, Because that seam is not going to be going through your slit there. And I put a piece of sticky strip again and this is where I'm going to put the top piece. I adhere that down. And now the bottom is going to go on the back. So I'm going to do that same thing. Put my sticky strip down and then put my back piece on. So you see they that when you pull one the other one also moves because it's attached to that bag. Now I added some foam dimensional adhesive because I wanted to leave some space in there so it wasn't so tight and it would have some room to move. So I'm putting my top piece right there and then for the bottom, I actually wanted this to have a card on it. So um, this is a folded piece of cardstock. That way you have the slider mechanism on the top and you can still open it up and write your note. Now I'm just measuring um, a hole for my slot. That's a slot punch by Stampin' Up, which is retired. And then I just found some cool American Crafts ribbon and I just put that in there. And that's it. Not too bad. You can do it. Um, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.